What is up YouTube, Sunny back at you with another video. Today I'm going to show you how I made this F1 post design and get right into it. Alright, so to get things started, I start with a 3240 by 4050 and I change the PPI to 300 just because that's probably the best quality that Instagram could handle. Instagram's annoying. Um, make sure you have your high quality turned on because otherwise you will not be getting the high quality and Instagram will compress the hell out of it. But so here, what I'm doing is I'm using Getty images and um, a little get around to get the Getty watermark out of there. It's using this website called getpaidstock.com. And basically what this website does is, as you can see here, it takes away the watermark but it significantly lowers the quality um and you don't want that so what i do is i overlay the getty picture with the get paid stock picture and then i will take the marquee tool i'm on the keyboard and i'll mask out the um the little numbers there in the getty image um watermark so basically what that does is you'll still lose quality on the part where the watermark was but you'll retain quality of the original image everywhere else um, I don't have Gigapixel on my Mac. Um, I would suggest that. I think it's $100 and it's a one-time purchase, so highly recommend it. I just don't have it on my Mac, so I can't uh, increase the quality. So trying to get the best quality I can is very important. Um, so what I do is I merge them and then I create a smart object, make everything a smart object, very important. Um, so then I go to select subject and I make sure I do cloud device just because it's not 100% always gonna be better, but a lot of the times the, the cutout will be quite a bit better because it's using um, the internet and the cloud to really analyze the um, the image rather than just using the kind of okay uh, Adobe software. Um, so what I do after this is you can do pen tool, you can do there's a, there's a bunch of different ways, but I just use a brush to kind of smooth it out and make sure the sides are all done um, just quick. And you're really not gonna notice those things later on anyway. Um, but so here I have I have a brush um, for shadows. So I just tap it once on a layer, duplicate the layer, move them over um, as I'm doing here. And I can try to remember to, actually, you know, I'll give the PSD to this um, designed in the description below so you can kind of check out everything i did here um and it will have these uh shadow brushes because well not the brush but the the image you know what i mean um so pretty much you just tap and you're good to go so here i actually don't even end up using this image of him sitting on a tire um but you know i was this this is the idea was kind of have a three thing but it didn't end up working you'll see later i get rid of it um but here what i do is once i cut it out i will um command or control and then click on the layer mask and then go up to select modify and then contract by two pixels and then invert your selection with control or command i and then take the brush and kind of brush it around um just kind of gets rid of those small edges around the edge um so in here, I'm just doing some camera off. I like to increase the sharpening texture. Um, most of the time, I like to decrease contrast and up the shadows a little bit just to make sure there's more in view. Um, I like to bring the oranges a little bit more red. Um, I think it gives a cool look. And same with the yellows. The yellow is a little bit more orange. Um, then I start messing with the, uh, the color of the jumpsuit. Um, I'm not a huge F1 guy, so I don't know what all this is but i love the colors and i thought it was really cool seeing f1 design so i had to hop on um but yeah so i do the camera on both him this picture and uh the main picture pretty much the exact same thing um you can copy and paste with the camera filters if you want but obviously each picture is different especially if they're not taken on the same day same setting same lighting whatever um what you're gonna have to do in camera raw is gonna be a lot different picture to picture. So I highly suggest you just kinda, it, it takes like 20 seconds to do. So just just, just do it individually. Um, and so then I noticed that the jumpsuits were a little bit different color. So I go back in and I adjust that because small things like that can really make the difference in a design. Um, 
and I didn't show exactly in here, but I have a CC, a color correction, that I pretty much copy and paste on all of my designs. Um, so I put that on top, so that was why there was a drastic color change. Um, and then here, I just duplicated the car, removed the background, and then duplicated it, flipped it to create the bottom, so the bottom wasn't white, so you could still have a track, um, because I wanted to use the whole bottom as the track. Um, and then I go in and I desaturate it, um, just because the lighting in that was making it a little bit more orangey brown, um, when obviously it's like a gray asphalt, so, um, and the color correction I have actually kind of gives it a blue tint, which I really like, blue tint on the shadows. Um, I found this nice stormy sky on Envato Elements, and then I just changed the hue a little bit. And so what I'm doing here is I'm rasterizing the layers and then going to filter, neural filters, harmonization, and then clicking on the sky background so it kind of matches the colors to the sky of all the pictures, the car, and the uh, floor. And I normally don't recommend rasterizing just because it kind of limits you from going back. But with neural filters, when you make it a smart object, a lot of times it kind of messes up. So I'll rasterize, I'll duplicate it and then rasterize. So I have a backup just in case, but you kind of have to rasterize because let's be honest, Adobe kind of sucks and a lot of bugs. So um, here I um, use an exposure adjustment layer, brought down the exposure um, just because the light is very bright behind him. So the front of him is going to be a lot more dark. And then I used a solid fill color layer on linear dodge. And then I do, typically what I do is I do one layer that's kind of more on uh, the guy. And I go into blend if, and I bring the um, the blacks to the right a little bit. So it kind of doesn't show up on the black parts, the shadows of him as much. And then I duplicate that layer, take off that blend if, and then do a small rim light. Obviously it depends on the image, but it can really make something pop as you can see here, just like the lighting right there, super quick. Um, and then I'm doing pretty much the same with the blend F for the, um, the road, because the road's going to get a little bit of that light. Um, and then I found this smoke overlay image that was just a Google search. And then, you know, the white doesn't look bad, but I thought it would look better if it kind of matched. So what I did was I just, um, first I made a layer to make it, uh, layer mask to blend it a little more. I just did a huge saturation, clipped it, colorized, and then you're able to kind of fine tune the color that you want. Um, so as you can see, in just kind of like a few steps, it really comes together. And then here you can just see me kind of playing with um, text options. I didn't like any of them, so I ended up grabbing uh, the Aston Martin logo and then kind of messing with fonts here again. Something super clean and simple on the bottom to show that it's Aston Martin and Fernando Alonso. Um, I thought it ended up looking really good. Here I'm adding some glow with a solid fill color layer um, and 10% flow, just kind of click around um, to really make a difference in kind of bringing the image together and feeling more together. And then I use a color balance to just kind of mess with the shadows, highlights, and midtones, kind of make it all feel more together, I made it a little bit more blue with the shadows. And I have these um, sparks or sparks uh, flares that I added really nice touch super simple thing you can do where there's light hitting put a flare make it shine even more so then what i did was i press command or control uh shift e or command it's tough doing it without um but basically you're gonna merge it all into one layer so on top it has like a final product and then i make it a smart image and then it's our object and then i go into camera raw and do some last final touch-ups um, pretty much the same thing as what I was doing with the color balance, just more of a final. And I usually like to bring up the sharpening and, um, texture a little bit more too, just so it's a little bit more detailed by the end. Um, as you can see here, I'm messing with the shadows. Um, I thought red might look nice, but I figured I would just end up sticking with kind of like the overall blue look. Um, just looks more together and clean in my opinion, but, um, and then with the shadows, I kind of want a little bit of green because I'm not really sure what color his top is supposed to be. It's like a teal, it's like a green, a blue, I don't know. But, um, and then another thing, calibration, don't sleep on calibration. Go down there and mess with the hue mostly of them 
and this one this uh graphics a little bit different just because it's all one color pretty much but a lot of them when you're messing with these it can be a game changer in terms of colors and kind of how the whole graphic feels um i'm not gonna lie i forgot about it for the longest time i used to use it loved it and then they kind of changed up camera a little bit and now it's calibration at the bottom um and so now this part um is optional obviously but it's something i like to do which is um i like to uh duplicate it rasterize it just to make it easier to move um and then i will turn the angle to 25 put it in the corner and i'll duplicate it two more times to fill up the page and then i will put the original the final back on top but make it a little bit smaller um that way you get a border um sometimes it looks cool sometimes it doesn't um especially if it's going to be a more simple clean design the border kind of messes with that um but i originally started doing it because um i wasn't really sure how to spice up my designs now i obviously can't but before when i wasn't really sure i just tossed a border on it because it adds a little bit of dynamicness to the top and the outsides um and then i don't recommend you doing this afterwards i was just kind of lazy um i outlined the aston martin letters and was going to try to make them glow so what i did was um i messed around with the outer glow settings the blending options didn't love it um i don't like to use them if i don't have to just because it's not as customizable as if you were to go in and paint with a brush um so that's what i'm doing there just kind of trying to make it glow but keep it more realistic rather than the crabby outer glow that they give you and so then i took a white brush and i literally just inside made sure there was a little bit on each like on the outsides of the white um i wasn't trying to completely cover the letters i just kind of like when there's a light like these the inside is going to be the brightest point so then the white will make it look a little bit better um, I set that to linear dot to add, and then I brought down the, um, fill a little bit. But that's how we got this, the final. Um, for my first F1 design, very proud of it, not gonna lie. Um, love the colors, love the simplicity, but the complexness at the same time with the, the smoke and the flares. But, yeah, um, that's pretty much it for the design. Thank you so much for watching, um, I just wanted to go over how I kind of do things and, you know, our, I even wanted to show you how I don't um, necessarily keep everything I'm doing and it's kind of a process of trial and error. And um, this design took about an hour and 20 minutes total, which isn't too bad at all, um, considering the way it came out, but very happy. Let me know if you want to see more of these or if there's any other types of tutorials or anything at all, any other videos you want to see. Let me know in the comments below, but would be greatly appreciated if you could like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Peace.